Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your version to summarize the verse, uh, covering around the verse from August 10th. And this was our first episode where we really got the uh, look into burn down segment where they're running through their list of blockers and what they're currently working on. And we find out that currently there's going to be 90 must fix issues prior to ETF actually being live for 3.0. And that's including 14 pure blockers, 48 critical items, 23 that are labeled with high importance, and 5 with moderate priority. Right now, the majority of those are in the memory-related issues, um, varying client crashes, spawning multiple ships at the same time, and it's causing an undefined error, um, as well as repair stations actually costing you money for the service but not providing you any repairs. Um, now, one thing that they were mentioning was during their testing that they were actually driving around and they didn't have a UI, so they were really relying on communication and flares. So it was kind of cool to hear the first mention of actual flares being used on planet, um, and it sounds like something that may be available in 3.0 if they're testing it now, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, right now, they have up to 50 ships to test that are in the game, and based on that, if, if they find a bug in one ship, it would be really lengthy for them to go, say, Okay, F7C, F7A, F7M, you know, like, basically you can't just go through all, every single ship in the game, it would just take a really long time. So their current progress and their process that they have is that if they find it in one ship, let's say a 325, um, then what they'll do is they'll jump over to another ship in a different manufacturer, so let's say a, a Hornet. And if the bug persists between those two different manufacturers that are relying on different um, designs, then all of a sudden they know that it may be an issue with the build or item system as opposed to a specific ship issue. Um, they're going to be moving towards animations, um, and some of the bugs with animations right now involve like flailing arms, um, you know, basically like the falling animation persisting. Um, so that's something they're going to be working on. Um, and we saw that kind of weird creature looking thing when the player kind of melts down and flings around, that was back again. So um, that's the sort of thing they're working on. So after this past week, um, they actually got down to 78 issues. Um, and the way they accomplished getting to that number was they knocked out 32 issues that were blockers, but they ended up adding 20. So it's kind of like taking two steps forward and one step back. At least you're still moving forward. Um, now, they did say that their total number is over 3,000, but that could be just known issues, but maybe not blocking for 3.0 and something that they're going to work on down the line. But that 78 number that's currently there, that's the one that's the real relevant one to blocking this thing from moving forward. Um, and then in the sneak peek, more advanced section, they were really talking about the Moby Glass. Um, there was a lot that was covered about the purpose of the Moby Glass, but we already know what it's for, so I'm not really going to spend any time covering those items. Um, they did say that in developing the new Moby Glass, that new render to, technology, or render to texture tech that we've talked about made this a lot easier because they didn't need to go in and spend a lot of time adding in like thousands of bespoke coding lines. Um, with the functionality of the Moby Glass changing, it was time to go ahead and update the model of it to allow you to be able to use it regardless of like the length of your sleeve, for example, so it wasn't being covered. Um, and they also said that we're going to have a civilian model for use when you're in your plain clothes and a military model for when you're in armor. Um, you're also going to end up being able to customize your Moby Glass to your liking, and it's almost going to act like a status symbol, kind of like wearing a fancy watch. And people will see how much you've put, like how much care you have in your Moby Glass, and it's going to be one of the most visible things about you since everybody has one. Um, the goal in developing the new user interface for the Moby Glass was to make it futuristic, but also to make it intuitive for use. Um, and part of that was also going to be making it immersive, which included some of the audio engineers actually using special microphones to capture electronic interference and kind of machines working like cell phones and PCs and stuff um, to build out an audio profile for powering on and working in the Moby Glass. As far as things that we'll be doing in the Moby Glass, um, Star Map is the first usage of their world display system to allow you to see data from various uh, kinds of sources in a usable format. Where that became challenging for them was that during development, um, it's taking the scale of everything and their positional data and trying to get those items of that size to fit into the relatively small viewing area of the Moby Glass. Um, mission Manager has been renamed to Contract Manager, and this is where all your missions are going to be displayed along with anything you choose to add or you receive from mission givers in the universe. And a later phase of that's going to be adding in your ability to actually customize a mission and post it onto the job board for others to end up picking up and working for you. And then finally, another phase is going to be their Inventory Manager, which is going to allow you to sort of uh, kind of like sort through the items that are stored in your ship, as well as transferring the goods between cargo boxes or to various locations. So that's your summarized the verse. If you guys have questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, and have a great day. Take care.